to me, I learned how to trust black men in a different way because I felt seen and heard and I felt protected and valued. How you doing, ma'am? I'm Brandon Keith Avery with Just My Opinion Reviews. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Happy to nice. be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I really do appreciate you taking the time to uh, be here today. Uh, so thank you for that. Thank you for that. And also just want to congratulate you too, uh, just on being a part of such a great film and such a great performance as well. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm loving it, I'm loving it. And I, I kind of want to start off, you know, um, and you know, a, a lot of people can say that like rap is poetry or poetry is rap, you know, they, they can be, you know, tied into each other. And uh, in this film right here, there's a lot of poetry, you know, um, you know, and, and your character, I, I would say as a poet, but I also noticed that in your last role, Project Power, you know, you was doing, that was a lot of rap scenes, you know, you was freestyling and flowing and going back and forth. And it was nice too. I, I bet you can do that in real life. Oh, so no. Not freestyle. <laughs> so, again, I'm sorry? I said not freestyle. Oh, <laughs> okay. I was about to try to battle you, but no, I, I'm, I'm joking. But no, I just kind of want to know, um, like, do you have, is, is that poetry, rap, is that something that you're also into in real life? Or like, what are other ways that you can relate to the character? Yeah, um... So I started acting and writing at the same time. I got into a youth company, a theater company in New York when I was 15. And um, I had been writing poetry since I was about 12. Um, but that's when I learned spoken word poetry and performing it on stage. And so it really became a part of my, my DNA. And, yeah. um, and so when I would travel and do poems, like I would do poetry for people in school for like different fraternities and sororities around school. Okay. Okay. And, um, and so it, with Robin, I felt like with Project Power, I felt like it was kind of the universe being like, all right, it's time to get back to it. Because I had written a one woman show back in 2012 called Subverted about the destruction of black identity in America. And it had a lot of poetry in it. But as I started doing TV and film, you know, I'm doing other people's work and I'm writing because I journal as all of my characters. So I'm writing little poems, but I'm not really sharing poetry anymore. You know, um, right so when when Project Power came and, it, and now I can't do a live on Instagram without somebody saying, can you spit for me or can you do a poem? <laughs> so I was like, OK, that's God. That's the universe being like, it's right. time to start sharing your, your poetry again. And so it was a high honor that Shaka allowed me to write the poem that Deborah shares with Chairman Fred in the movie. Um, so I got to put that that part of myself on and you know my birthday is next month and I've been playing a little bit of piano. So maybe there's going to be something on March 22nd on my Instagram. <laughs> right in the time for spring and uh, happy early birthday, happy early birthday. And so that's, uh, that's something interesting to me. You said that Shaka let you write the poem. And so like working with him, you know, I, I know he, he's up and coming, like this is one of his first big features. He did Newlyweds in 2013, but you know, work it like, how's it, how, what, how's it to work with Shaka? Does he give you a lot of creative freedom for you to kind of just do your own thing and just kind of fulfill the role you want to? But, you know, I, I imagine that may be challenging because this is like a Fred Hampton Black Panther movie and you want to get it right and accurate. So if you could just kind of talk about that relationship and how much freedom he gave you on set. I mean, Shaka is rare. He's he's like, I feel like we, we were spoiled with him because although there was a lot of pressure for him to want to get it right, you know, especially, um, he still allowed for there to be space to play and grow and evolve and collaborate and communicate. So I think, I mean, that's just... That's just a shout out to him. You know, I remember, you know, there was, we, we were, I think we probably were running behind one day and I'm getting on set and I'm putting this belly on and everything is a little bit like chaotic for me. And um, I remember looking at him at Video Village and he says, you okay? He mouths it. I say, oh yeah, I'm good. I was just getting into character. But right. the fact that all of this is going around, he's responsible for so many things. He has the family, you know, to talk to about things. He has the, he has Warner Brothers, he has Macro, he has all of these people involved. And yet still he found time to see me, make sure that I was good. Oh, you know, really? so the humanity was always there on set. Um, you know, from the beginning, you know, I, I said, I have two thoughts, you know, I don't want to overstep. So let me know. And he said, oh, you'll be playing her. You can't overstep and give me your notes. And he called them notes. There's no ego about him, you know, and whenever there was a suggestion and he didn't think it was the one, he would say, I don't think that's it, but here's why. And I don't know how many people is going around doing that, especially with something that has so much importance, not just, it's, it's our chance to tell our stories for ourselves. And so there's a lot of pressure, but he's still, still opening himself up and knowing that it'll make for a better film to have to, you know, he trusted us. 
you know, and, and that's, and then he, he says that somebody else said this, but he says 90% of mo- a great movie is casting or something like that. And so he was really happy. He said he got everybody that he wanted, that he wrote it for. So I'm, I'm honored to just be a part of that. And I made a joke with him the other day. I said, look, listen, I'm trying to be the Michael B to your Ryan Coogler, you know, they're constantly working together. So shoot, I will always work with Shaka if he, if he'll have me. Well, wonderful. I hope you two continue to work together because this was a beautiful marriage of just all kinds of talent. And that was actually why my next question um, I wanted to ask you is that, I mean, how does it feel? He actually envisioned you, envisioned you to play the role. Yeah. You know, that's like super dope. Like I, I, I wrote this for you. And also just like with everything, like we were talking about trying to get it right, you know, him coming to you, like, was there, a, was there an overwhelming amount of pressure you know, placed on you. And I think you just said that, but like, how did you overcome it? You know, how, how did you break through that barrier? You know, there wasn't, there wasn't really a lot of pressure. Oh. You know, it was, I, I absolutely said, is the family involved? I want to make sure that the family is involved. And so the idea of pressure, the I think the most pressure I felt was when we had to go to Chicago to meet the family and sat around a table with them, talking to them for about seven hours. And Chairman Fred Jr. said, I want to know why every single one of you want to do this film. And I'm going to start with you. And he had pointed to Daniel. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, I, I came out and said, look, I'm nervous. You know, and I wanted to, and I apologize to Mama Okua because the way that things had to go is we had to build our team before we brought it to the family, you know, to give it the best opportunity possible. So therefore, essentially, I had to get on board or agree to play her before I got to meet her. So I, I you know, I apologized to her and I said, um, it wasn't a lack of care. I definitely wanted, uh, want you to know that I, I care so much about your opinion and the fact that you're still here with us. It means a lot to have your approval, you know. Um, and she, she really appreciated it. So wonderful, wonderful. Um, another question that I, I want to get to, um, like you actually had one of the standout scenes in the movie for me. Um, it was kind of towards the end, l- a little intimate scene between you and uh, Daniel p- playing Fred. It was about the journal, yes. and also just about your character. I like how you know you are were a wo- or a woman that spoke her mind, even when you first met Daniel and you was asking him was he a, a poet. When y'all had another scene where you was calling him out for being shy, but actually when he found your journal and this line of audio was in the trailer. So I'm not spoiling anything that, okay, you're, you're saying that you, you sacrifice your body for the party, for the people, for the revolution, but you, you, you're not, you know, you're not thinking like me because I have a, a human being growing inside of my body. That seems like that would be obvious. But when you said that, I was just like, Dang, you know, like it's just so much that goes on that like women go through that sometimes just men don't think about. You know what I'm saying? And that t- that right there and tying that in with you know, like you speaking your mind, could you just and, and women in general, could you talk about the importance of that scene? Because it really did stand out to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I think again, like just uh when when you get a position of power, don't forget to listen to the people that's around you and um you know, and elevate them as well. Because Shaka, you know, he, cause I said, I think, you know, we don't have, we don't hear a poem in a movie and I think we miss an opportunity. And he says, I think you're right. Do you want to take a shot at that poem? You know, and so uh, him kind of removing himself to say, she, she knows this character. She's a woman, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm going to have a perspective on something that she, he, he's just not going to be able to think about. And so to, for him to honor that is, um, is, amazing and so I had to put my my myself in the shoes of being a mother I'm not a mother yet but um I could imagine what it what it feels like to to give love and to know that you have to give that um to the world and kind of relinquish that control um yeah thank you and just one more quick question I know that Daniel took on smoking so that he can get the texture of Fred's voice I was like whoa that's so unorthodox did you have to do anything like that that's out of your normal system to kind of you know uh get into Deborah or or you just did your thing good question uh sure out of my my normal is to trust people like you know what I mean and like we always think that we trust but to me I learned how to trust black men in a different way because I felt seen and heard and I felt protected and valued. And so um, because I felt that from my own core with them offset, that it allowed me to to understand that, you know, Mama Kua said there were certain things that she just wouldn't have said to Chairman Fred. 
that I might might have said in the movie. And I couldn't understand. She's so fiery and she speaks her mind for sure. How could she say she wouldn't say anything? But I learned in hindsight that when you trust or when somebody warrants that kind of trust out of you that that Chairman Fred did to the people and subsequently did to her, then you don't have to be on the defense. You know what I'm saying? And so I feel like I didn't have to be on the defense and I was definitely, I was very open. My spirit was open in a way that I have not experienced before. Right on. Well, again, uh, Miss Dominique Fishback, I just want to say thank you so much. Great film. You did an amazing performance. Uh, I have more questions, but I got to go. And again, I just want to say thank you and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Bye bye. Judas and the Black Messiah will be released in theaters and on HBO Max Friday, February 12, 2021. Please make sure you check out my review as well. And I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery. And that's just my opinion. Peace.